Hey, this is Kenneth, and today I'm going to talk to you about my MSP430 fan controller board that I just built for my new computer. Now, I use the term new computer loosely here. Is The last time I was at Hal Ted on the Maker Faire salvage crawl, I managed to find an entire pallet of these industrial kiosk computers for $25 a piece. They've got a Pentium 4, which is two threads, one gig of RAM, 80 gig hard drive, fairly decent box for 25 bucks. I picked it up, brought it home, plugged it in, it worked. Unfortunately, the fans were a little loud. Here, let me show you. That was how loud it was all the time. Is the motherboard on this computer was not smart enough to control the fans at all and so it ran the fans at full blast all the time, 8,000 RPM. Kept the computer nice and cool, unfortunately it also kept it insufferably loud. Uh, using a sound meter that I borrowed, I actually clocked it in at about 64 decibels, which is not at all dangerous, but it was rather unpleasant to deal with. So, I built this small board right here. It has a MSP430G2452, which I programmed with a launch pad, yay, Texas Instruments. Um, this board then also has a floppy drive power connector, so I'm powering it from the actual comp the system's main power supply. So that's a four pin floppy disk power connector. Then it has three headers for the three fans, two three pin fans and one four pin fan. MSP430, sets of uh, N NPN and PNP transistors to drive it, and then a thermistor, which I actually have routed into the center of the CPU cooler to actually monitor the temperature of the CPU. So what we have right now is on Linux, I have LM sensors running, and it's monitoring the, syst the CPU temperature. And so right now it's saying that the system's temperature is about 35, 36 degrees Celsius. Over here on this voltmeter, I have the thermistor voltage. So right now it's saying that it is 0.923 volts. And as the temperature goes up, the thermistor will drop in resistance and this voltage will go up. Um, so now it's fairly stable. It sits at 36 degrees almost all the time. It's a rather decently quiet system. Now I'm going to show you what happens as I put load on it and it starts to warm up and my fan controller starts to respond to this transient heat. So in a different terminal I'm going to start two sessions of gzip because I just have it, I have gzip, I piped in dev u random so I'm just feeding random data to gzip and I'm having it dump it out to dev null. So I'm just having the computer do random busy work. Almost right away you can see the, C the CPU temperature is starting to go up. It's already at 38 degrees, 39 degrees Celsius. So it's actually a fairly rapid change between a CPU at idle and a CPU running. Now the question becomes how did I have this fan controller take its temperature readings and then translate that into specific fan speeds? The Naive way to do it is called a proportional control, where you look at how much warmer the CPU is than you want it to be, and you then multiply that by some scaling factor, and you say, that's how fast I'm going to run the fan. Temperature goes up, that difference gets larger, and you then run the fan that much faster. It goes down, the fan will slow down. Unfortunately, the problem with that is that at zero, your arrow when, when your, the CPU temperature reaches the set point, your error is zero, and so it stops the fans. Now obviously, these fans can't be stopped at idle because we're still generating heat. And so it's never going to reach the set point, but instead equilibrate at some point a little bit above it, which isn't what we want. We want the CPU to really reach the temperature and stay there. Uh, this is where a more sophisticated control system comes in called Proportional Integral Differential Control, PID, PID control. So what it is, is it is three separate terms that together create 
one controller. Proportional, integral, differential. Proportional, I just talked about, that's where you take the difference between what you want and what you have, and you just multiply it by some proportional constant k. Integral is different in that you actually integrate the error over a long term. If you're a little bit above your set point, you add a little bit more fan speed, and then a second later, if you're still a little bit above, you add a little bit more. Not the same amount, a little bit more. Derivative is the third part of the term, and it is actually the opposite of integral in that instead of it being you add up the errors over a long term, it's that you take the change in the error in the short term. As you can see, our CPU has gotten up to 48 degrees Celsius. Our temperature, our thermistor now reads 1.088. And you've noticed that the system has gotten noticeably louder. Uh, that's because the fan has had to start running at a higher rate. Um, but again, it's only gone up 10 degrees. So, we will now tell our computer, dear computer, um, thank you so much for compressing this random, random. We no longer need it. We've now terminated our two G-zips. System's now idle again, and you'll see that the temperature is going to start falling fairly rapidly back down to 36. The fan's still running fairly high. If we were using just proportional control, the fans would slow down rather quickly. But I am instead on this one implemented integral control to show you the problem with that one, but the advantages. So. Still running fairly loud, we're getting fairly close. Back to the storyboard. So, we have proportional, which is the current error, the integral, which is the long-term error, and the derivative, which is the short-term transient change in the error. The derivative would have been advantageous when we first started the load because it would have seen the error is going up quickly, so I should turn the fan up earlier is the derivative term tends to make a system respond faster, where an integral term tends to make it respond slower. And so this system responded fairly slowly to this transient change in temperature. But it will very well eventually return to the exact, where with the derivative you have no emphasis on actually returning to the correct value at any time. Um, just to clarify, we're talking about your standard control loop. So on the left here is the user settings. So I t this is where I told my fan controller, I want it to be 36 degrees Celsius. That goes in to this summing junction. From the computer, I have a thermistor, which is the sensor and is the feedback of the system come back and I take the difference between my 36 degrees Celsius I wanted and whatever temperature the thermistor is reading. That is my error term, which I then feed into this PID algorithm. Taking this error, which is ideally zero, the proportion of zero, zero times some constant is gonna be zero. The integral of zero over a long time is zero and the derivative of zero is zero. So if the world is perfect, this PID controller would output zero. If the system were to heat up like it just did, the proportional constant would go the proportional term would go up for would go up as it is wrong. The integral term would start to integrate that and so it would be kind of a ramp. And then the derivative term would give you a quick spike at the beginning when the error first jumps and then it would back off as the error settles into a more steady state. So then eventually it would cool the system down by turning up the control and the whole system would then go back to error being zero. But the integral term never had a chance to go down. 
since the integral term can only increase when the error is positive and only decrease when the error is negative, if your error were to go up and then equilibrate back to zero, the integral term would stay non-zero. Since the integral term is non-zero, the output control would be non-zero and the fans would be running at a non-stopped state. That's why, that's why we want it in this fan controller because we want this integral term to figure out how much fan we need when the system is just sitting idle and continue to apply that fan speed forever. Because otherwise, it's going to stop the fan, the system's going to heat up, and then it's going to panic and be like, oh my god, the system's getting hot, turn the fans on, they'll, it'll cool down, and then it'll turn off. Unfortunately, like I said, the integral term is slow. Now remember, the set point was 36 degrees Celsius, and it is overshot, or undershot, I guess. We're down to 33 degrees Celsius. What happened was, the integral term can't start to back off until you're below your set point. The thing is, if you go above your set point, you want to just go back to your set point. You don't want to go down, and then up, and down, and up, and down. And actually, if you design an integral system very, very poorly, it'll actually oscillate. Which is sad. So, looking at it one more time, integral term, as the error changes, the, the proportional term increases or decreases the control output, which in this case is the speed of the fans based on the temperature. The integral term integrates all of the error, and the derivative term is a transient. When the error goes up, the control goes up, and when the error goes down, the control goes down. So. At this point, this one is running a purely integral controller, which means that there's no proportional term and there's no derivative term. It only takes the long-term error, integrates it, and then uses that as the speed control. It's doing a fairly decent job, but it's not ideal. With a proportional term in it, as the error changes, it would be able to apply fan quicker and would be able to then keep the integral term closer to the steady state term that it needs for idle. Because since the load has gone away, we've had to refine this stable idle point where the system will sit there and stay at one temperature. The derivative term would also vastly improve the speed of the system because that very first transient is if we sit here and start to Jesus again, this first transient right here, the, the derivative term will actually multiply this and very quickly rev the fans up. Now, of course, tuning these three terms is very subtle and there's lots of mathematics and I've taken several college courses on it and not quite learned anything useful yet, but this is the general idea. All right, so we're gonna kill those. So now, finally I'm going to show you what happens when you really screw up one of these integral terms. So, I didn't show it, but obviously what it is is it's proportional is a constant times the error. The integral is a, another constant times the integral of the error. And the derivative is a third constant times the derivative of the error. Um, so it's these three constants that specify how your system responds in its dynamics. So now I'm going to turn up the gain quite severely on the fan controller. This, this right now is just that the fact that it reset, but now that it's returned to steady state, I want you to notice that it actually hunts is the gain on the integral is so large that when there's a small error, it overshoots and then it overcompensates and then it overshoots and it overcompensates. And so now it actually will sit here and it will hunt. Um, this is a tendency that you will often see in engines 
is cars. Um, I work on diesel locomotives actually that also have this tendency where if the governing system that is trying to maintain the engine speed is faulty, it will do this hunting where it is constantly going in and out. Um, we particularly don't want this in the desktop system because this is kind of annoying and distracting. Is as you're sitting there working on your computer and you hear the fan rev up and rev down, um, it's kind of obnoxious. Uh, thermostats for your air conditioning system in, uh, incorporate a somewhat simpler but similar method called hysteresis. Is you wouldn't want to listen to your air conditioning clicking on and clicking off every 30 seconds as it tries to hold your room at one temperature. And so it instead clicks on, runs for a long time, and then lets it come back slower. Um, which again is kind of doing this hunting by design, but decreasing the, these transients that you notice. So ideally, if your air conditioning system could be proportionally controlled, where you could, you could have some other state other than all the way on and all the way off, you could find this integral steady state point at which your air conditioner could run all the time using very, very little power. Food for thought. If you figure that out, you'll probably make a lot of money. But, so, anyways, this has been Kenneth, giving you a basic conceptual introduction to proportional integral derivative control, showing you why industrial kiosk computers, even at $25, aren't such a good deal, and the basic outline of the operation for my MSP430 fan controller. In the blog post associated with this video, I will give you several close-up shots of this MSP430 control board, the schematics, and the source code. And so, by all means, feel free to go pick up a launch pad, build this into one of your computers, and start playing with the PID algorithm that I have in the firmware for it. And feel free to respond, show what you have, uh, set up some sort of temperature logger. Uh, I was originally going to actually take this thermistor reading and feed it back in through an RS-232 port, but I kind of ran out of space on the board. But that would be a good extension because then you could have your system be able to talk to the fan controller. Where right now, they are just complete, two completely separate systems. But, so this has been Kenneth. Hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, comments, uh, feel free to leave them below. Uh, if you have any anything else, email me. Um, I love to take your guys' stuff, and we'll try and see what we can do this summer.